In previous videos I've emphasized that when you're graphing a unfamiliar um, smooth uh, shape that um, uh, there are two types of accuracy that you can go for. One is x-intercept accuracy. So if I know that a point goes, if a curve goes through the x-axis at these points, then I'm pretty good to graph it. Um, another way to uh, be accurate is to know where a graph is flat. So if I know that a graph is flat there, and I know that it's flat there, then this um, is a decent sketch of it. I mean, it's not that decent, but it's all right. Well, the point of this video is to tell you about yet another type of accuracy, which is to ask, where does the graph change from concave up to concave down? So to the left of this point, it's concave down. To the right of this point, it's concave up. To the left of this point, it's concave up. And to the right of this point, it's concave down. Now, we've actually got a grip in um, calculus on whether something is concave up or concave down. It's the second derivative, in other words, the third row of a multiple choice box. So um, let's assume we had this um, graph, which is a kinked bucket. It either looks like this or like this. Um, it's the power of four that tells me that it's that shape. Um, and I want to know where to put it. Um, well, I'm going to differentiate, differentiate again. So that's my multiple choice box. And if a if the second derivative giving a positive answer means concave up, and if the second derivative giving a negative answer means concave down, then, it, then if I want to know where it crosses from concave up to concave down, this definitely needs to be zero. So I'll solve that to be zero. So x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. Uh, they are the two places where it crosses from concave up to concave down. How high are they at those points? If x equals 1, then y equals negative 5. If x equals negative 1, then y also equals negative 5. So we basically have our graph. So negative 1, comma negative 5, and sorry, at 1, comma negative 5, and at negative 1, comma negative 5, we have a switch from concave up to concave down. Now there's never any excuse for not working out the y-intercept. If you put x equals 0 in there, you get y equals 0, so this is the y-intercept. So it's going to be concave down there. And then at that moment, it switches to concave up. At this moment, it switches to concave up. And there's our graph. It's not particularly accurate in terms of how low this gets. Um, it's not very accurate in terms of the x-intercepts, though it does have the y-intercept there, which also happens to be an x-intercept. but Knowing where to switch from concave down to concave up has enabled us to anchor this graph. And that's what graphing is basically about. It's, um, it's about knowing um, roughly where to put uh, the sketch of a curve. Now, if you're ever asked to prove that something is a um, crossover from concave up to concave down, in other words, a point of inflection, then the way you must do it is by properly demonstrating that there is such a switch. We know um, that something can be zero without genuinely crossing from positive to negative. I mean, we've seen that a million times in graphs like this. Um, so we must demonstrate a genuine crossover. So that's my point there, 0 0.5, 1.5. Put in 1 to the second derivative, of course you get zero. That's where 1 came from. Um, so if you put 0 0.5 in, um, you get something um, 
negative, um, you put 1.5 in, you get something positive. So you, so you write, therefore, concavity switches, therefore, x equals 1 is at a point of inflection. Okay, now sometimes you get asked to find these as a separate task. What this video is advertising to you, them to you is as an additional way of anchoring a graph to the right part of the page. Um, and you can also use it to check your accuracy. Um, so if you were graphing this and you wanted to be dead sure that you got it right, you could search for a point of inflection and hopefully it would be roughly there. And if it wasn't, you'd know that you'd made a mistake.